Yeah, we got a Q and A for all four of you. Yeah. All right, man. Freaky secrets once again. Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys. Secret freaks. Ooh. Truly secret freaks. <laughs> in this theater, in, uh, you know, here. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Uh, up. Thanks for coming out. We got, of course, Lucky Saruti here. Matt Sorensen that did uh, Bed Vision Productions that did Freak, the first feature, and then we're from the second. You know, this guy. Running around, John Bergio and Reed Elliott. Sorry, guys. I mean, uh, <laughs> here, so here, so you've seen a lot of them tonight. And uh, Josh Dolan, of course, it's at yes. LLP. Right? Yes. 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 The number one stop for the war in uh, Rhode Island. The only. <laughs> yeah. How was it puppeteering? That's what I did not hear before, so I want to hear yeah. it. Uh, the actual experience of puppeteering was tough. Um, we kind of slap the puppet together in a, in a low budget way that we knew that I was going to be operating it, so I built it in a way that was less considerate than I would if it was for a human being. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was, we used a blue suit, so we shot with, the puppet was kind of like around my waist and his head came out like that, uh, and his legs kind of went backwards on my legs and were like taped to my ankles. So like there was like a kind of grasshopper thing going on. And then for when he was on me, his arms were attached to big rods, like big poles behind me. And uh, our assistant puppeteer, who also played the mom in Freak, was controlling those arms. Uh, but for close-up shots, the, we had gloves for the hands and stuff. So. And then a head. And then a head, right. And then we also had a, a head for the close-ups that had the moving eye and the moving mouth with the drool. Uh, but Lucky uh, used the phrase, pain is temporary, film is forever, <laughs> a lot. And we also shot outdoors in July in the Adirondacks, and I was only wearing like a skin-tight blue suit. So like when we were trying to set up for a shot or hold for a shot, I was getting eaten a lot by bugs. We all were. <laughs> I couldn't move, and it was even more of that. <laughs> but it was fun, and it was exactly what we wanted it to be. Yeah, uh, a lot of people think that it's, especially in that first kind of kill sequence, a lot of people say that it's stop motion like, um, or they think that it was stop motion. There's no stop motion in the movie, um, but just the way that it moved with Matt and the kind of removal that we had to do of the bodysuit. It kind of feels that way. It kind of feels a little stilted, a little like Rankin and Bass-esque <laughs> sort of deal. Yeah. Um, which kind of, you know, it works uh, in designing Arthur. We didn't want it to look like you could look at him and be like, oh, I know what's wrong with him. I know what he has or I know, you know what I mean? It he doesn't exist, that couldn't exist, and that's kind of what we wanted. So um, that really worked with how we designed the, the puppet. It was like a reverse backpack, and like Matt's very tall. When Arthur stood up, he would be, yeah, he was very tall and very uh, threatening. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what inspired you to make Freak? Oh, I mean, honestly, Making that movie was very much uh, just wanting to do something. We, we made that in like the height of everything shutting down in, in 2020. We made that over the summer. So um, that's just like a bunch of friends like making something fun and weird, you know. Um, I had had, I had written a script um, and it was, it was, called Sub Subway Freak, and it was a bigger budget uh, movie, and um, it was set in New York City, and, um, but it still had, you know, like the, the female lead, and she, you know, meets Arthur, uh, and who lives in the subway tunnels, um, and it was a lot more romantic, like they were like going to be romantically involved, it was super weird, but uh, I took a lot of that when we were thinking of what we were going to do, and that we wanted to make a movie, um, I had made a short, a 30 minute short before this, Kindness of Strangers. Um, 
So I was kind of like in that headspace already of like, you know, oh, maybe I want to try to make movies. And um, so when everything stopped, uh, we just got some people that were kind of in the same, you know, bubble and, and we went out and we did this. So I, I had poached stuff. I would always wanted to make a slasher movie. Um, and, you know, I like a sympathetic sort of scenario where you kind of feel bad for everybody. So that was kind of the direction that it took. Um, and with Matt having a background in, in puppetry, we wanted to use a puppet. So that was really, I mean, that's it. Loving slasher movies, loving villains, loving, you know, kills, practical effects, gore, stuff like that. All of that is just like, well, let's make that, you know? Nothing else to it. Nice. <clears throat> Reeves, how'd you yeah. get Lloyd to show his dick? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, We just let it, that shot roll in and he just whipped it out, man. That's how Lloyd rolled. So, so the... The unedited version, I, I distinctly remember no prosthetic. Did he ask you to put the prosthetic in after the fact and take his real dick out? We had already filmed this big cum shot for him. He just whipped it out on his own. So if you really, you know, 50 bucks will send you, will we transfer you? So. <laughs> <laughs> it goes for you watching at home. <laughs> Secret of cuckisland.com. Yeah, yeah that's a I have a question for you. Yeah. We <laughs> um, you know, I've been working on, so I, I, I went to school for screenwriting, I've written a lot of scripts that like, the budget was just too much, and then I eventually got smart and like, you know what, I'm going to throw all this shit out, I'm going to start writing a script that is just, it only features people I know as the characters and like places I know, and start working from there. Um, I mean, it got a little bigger than that, but we're able to find people, find places. But, so I've been working on that script for a while. It didn't quite pop. And then I met this guy. I saw this guy shirtless, uh, age 20, with this like um, tuxedo, like he had a Chippendale look going, if you know the Chippendale <laughs> dancers. He had a little bow tie on. And he was holding, this was on the set of uh, Hashtag Shakespeare's uh, Shitstorm, which is Blake Kaufman's last big movie. Um, that trick that trauma did. It was only a raccoon that had like big tits. <laughs> it was, oh, it was a beaver. It was, it was, it was a beaver with a vagina on its face because it was the beaver beaver. Or maybe it was the raccoon. It was the raccoon. 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 It was the raccoon. It was yeah, raccoon. It was the raccoon. Rac raccoon. 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 And yeah. that just seeing him on the set where already there's so much crazy shit happening, just that image like burned itself <laughs> in my mind. And I'm like, you know what? This is my muse. <laughs> and, like, and from there, like the whole script came to life. Basically, it fixed all the problems once he was in it. Have nice. Yeah. With all those scenes in the Secret of Kagata, where you were running through like the streets and like passing by people, was there? <laughs> did, did you get like? Were the people around notified? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, did a problem ever occur with them? They're, they're wearing masks usually. No one knows who they are. <laughs> so the only time I would say that we had a problem was there's the scene where I get stabbed in the balls with the needle. Yes. And we're filming, we're right about to shoot, and then some lady comes down and sits down with her lunch, and you would have thought that, like, us being like, hey, can you please eat your lunch five feet that way, was us being like, hey, we want you dead, old lady! Like, she hated it. Uh, and then right after that, a crackhead came by, and he sat down in the same spot, and we were like, Hey, can we have you sit over here? And he totally did. He sat there <laughs> all day. None of the other crackheads came to bother us, because he was watching over our gear, and it was great. No, it was a full-on junkie was shooting up in the background, and like nodding off on his feet like this in the background. And as soon as I walk up to him, because I'm like, that's, you know, that's, a, that's the one bad thing about being the director. you got to deal with that shit. <laughs> so, so I walk up to him, like, fuck. And as soon as I like get near him, he just suddenly like, oh hey man, you need me to move? That's cool. Yeah, so yeah, he was the show one dude, and he moved behind camera and he nodded the fuck off behind us. You did great. Yeah, we left them. That's the, that was the scene with the syringe, and so we had a bunch of extra empty syringes, so we just like. When he was past that later, we just kind of like left some syringes. <laughs> <laughs> and I really saw him just like his junkie sense kicked in. He's sitting on this bench and he's just like, like looking around, making sure like it's not a, it's not a setup. <laughs> <laughs> wow.
Um, so that's, that's life in the big city. <laughs> is, that, is that how you pay your help? What? <laughs> yes. yes. Three needles. Three needles. <laughs> hey, man, it's more we gave that chick that wouldn't move, so that's all I can say. True. <laughs> Tree film sets nice, and, uh, you know, I get some now. John, was it your idea to do the blowjob scene? <laughs> no, so we were at a screening. I wish I could tell you the name of the movie, or it was like a friend of a friend was like, Hey, come on, it's a rooftop screening! And there was a similar scene where somebody was trying to suck their own penis, and me and Reeves both like, At the same time, we realized, like, we need it, it needs to be in the movie. They came up with a better idea. <laughs> so it was not my original idea, to be brutally honest. Yeah. But. We, I didn't make Reeves put it in the script. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a choice, man. We, didn't, we can't just... I mean, yes, we ripped them off, but we can't let this other film on some random rooftop outdo us. <laughs> That's what it came down to. They did a really good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got a cameo from two uh, big directors in there. Ben Johnson. Yeah. 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 And the whiplash maniac himself, Dwayne Steeler. How'd you get them to show their balls? They were they were they were all too proud. <laughs> no, uh, all the all the all the prosthetic testicles in the movie. Um, this this man, of course, the only man with the balls to show his balls, <laughs> for real. But uh, all all the uh, prosthetic testicles were made by the husband and wife team of Ben and Jen Johnson uh, down in Tennessee. Who's the and Ben is the director of Curse of the Were Deer. Which is a big yeah. movie. Just premiered at Troma Dance. It'll be making the rounds. We're going to be up here. Who knows? Um, and uh, matter of fact, it's got this guy in it, Joshua Dolan. Yeah, I was yeah. in it. Yay! That's uh, Squid Inkman. Is that your? What's your official name? You Squid Man. Squidman. That was Squidman. it. Just Squid yeah. Man. Yeah, Ink Squidman. <laughs> um. Yeah, what was the question? Oh, it, it, oh, and Dwayne was just down. Yeah. Dwayne's always down. Yeah. Dwayne's I'm, down for anything, huh? If it's the last question, I got a question for them. I know I can probably ask him in the car later, but you guys might want to answer. So I've heard rumors of a freak too. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's confirmed or not, if you guys were to do a sequel, would you guys keep the same puppet, or would you guys update the puppet? Oh. Uh, would it sure. operate this and look the same way, or would it? Okay. I we have not really discussed. You discussed all of these questions. Yeah, I, I, I guess, but um, but not in public. In I would like to be a little bit more definitive right now in terms of an update to Arthur Crenshaw. Um, we definitely won't be using the same puppet. Okay. Uh, sorry. We just well, won't be. The, <laughs> the latex doesn't age. Yeah, well. for sure. Yeah. It, it, it was built for a good time, not a long time. So uh, it will. It's living very happily. Uh, rotting away at my parents' house uh, in upstate New York right now um, in their shed. But we will, uh, there will be a return of, of Arthur Crenshaw that is uh, definitely confirmed. Um, but don't call it a sequel. Oh, not yet. Yeah, yeah I, so the thing yeah. about not that either. calling <laughs> it like Freak 2 or something, the, the way that that only be beneficial is if the first one did really well. Which, like... Or it was the only movie named Freak. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, like, which it's not. Um, you know, people have said, if you're going to make it, do Freaks. So it's like Alien and Aliens. You can't do that either, because one of my favorite movies of all time, from the 30s, uh, freaks, and then there, there was, they just made a movie, somebody just made a movie called Freaks like two years ago or something. But, so whatever it's called, I'm not sure. Uh, and also, it's very important to me that you don't have to have seen Freak because hopefully, my hope is that more people will see the bigger and better, uh, uh, newer one than have seen uh, Freak. More people have seen, for the record, more people have seen Freak than I thought would ever care to, which is amazing. But I'm hoping that even more people will want to see this new one. So, um, what would you all call it? Oh, sure, we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a secret, but it like gets into the family, the Crenshaw family line, a little more. So what? what, what you, don't. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But you can. You can. Uh, 
text or, or DM Benjamin Productions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me know if you have an idea. But so yes, that is happening. We're pretty excited about it. Um, the plan is uh, next next summer we'll we'll start to shoot. Awesome. Um, so that'll be cool. But yeah, we're definitely uh, upping everything in terms of uh, production value <coughs> and, and and everything like that. So I'm very excited. We didn't have a budget for a freak other than my credit card, which we made back <laughs> at the end after we were selling. Hell yeah. So like, we broke even. Yeah, yeah, I was like, this is the first uh, time I've ever heard of it. Right. <laughs> but uh, the freak will, sometimes I like to call it, yeah. it's going to be more funded. We're going to have uh, yeah. more equipment, a better puppet, more kind of professional uh, staff on tap, mm. and all, all sorts of things like that. Yeah, it, it's hard. This was actually... We, so, I don't know who knows this, but uh, this was a tour that the three of us did. This show, minus a few different trailers, we toured uh, a little bit. We had a week long of, of shows that we would do, the Freaky Secrets tour. Um, tonight, this, this was months ago, tonight was the first time that I semi-watched Freak sat with everybody. I would fuck off somewhere and I wouldn't watch it. Because it's really tough for me to watch that movie. I, I'm proud of it. Uh, I made it a long time ago and I'm, I've made another movie since then. We've made another movie since then. I, uh, Available to purchase at the booth outside. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm very, very uh, excited at the prospect to kind of do some other things a little bit better the second time around with Arthur. Arthur is somebody that means a great deal to me. Uh, so, I, that is like the thing that, I, I didn't really have an interest in making a sequel, uh, to be totally honest. I, I, I like the idea of, of kind of expanding and stuff, but the reason that I would do it more than anything else is now, I feel, I mean, the progression is there a little bit more than um, it maybe was, which is like kind of what you want. So I, that, in and of itself, is a reason enough for me to be like, okay, we can go back to the camp and we can have a little bit more fun. Same goes for the puppetry as well. Mm -hmm. Like that was my first puppet, that was my first film ever. Yeah. Great. <laughs> but uh, just through the process of doing the shoot and, and kind of, knowing what was actually needed, as opposed to like, we have a big theater background, which is like, you see all of it all the time, and it's always alive. Whereas this, it's like, there, there are certain things we can build a lot better to work specifically well for what they're needed for. Especially if we have a budget. For sure. <laughs> for sure. So yeah, very exciting. I'm, I'm super uh, excited about that. But yes. You had a lot of natural lighting, and like, it was pretty dark. Are you going to keep the same... Well, visual look. <laughs> again, it's so funny because like if you watch, um, it was just a Dead Vision production, My, our production company, um, it was just five years ago, like the other day, since that started. Um, and if you were to go back to the very first thing that we ever did, to the most recent thing, which is a movie called Uncle Slezo's Toxic and Terrifying TV Hour. It's a, a horror anthology, you know. Um, you're literally watch. I didn't go to film school. I didn't. I don't know how to make movies. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, you're literally watching someone learn how to do something when you see what we have the progression of what we have done. So. Uh, to answer the lighting question, I didn't fucking know how lights work. <laughs> you think, like, when you watch a movie, I, I guess, for someone who didn't know anything, like, a lot of shit has to be lit to, like, look like it's dark. Do you know what I'm, which, like, is counterintuitive to me. I'm like, oh, you would just light what you need to light, which is what I did, which is what, I mean, that's why, I, I have learned to be like, oh yeah, we meant to make it super dark. That's not true. Uh, there was one light, and, and that was it. And it's like this fucking big. And somebody's holding it. 
depending on <laughs> the screen or the projector you get, it will yeah, be it'll it'll look like a completely yeah. different movie if you get the when it, you purchase it. That's how it was uh, <laughs> meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. In your home, it looks really nice. Looks okay. But like here, I I was like, oh, it's fucking dark. But it's crazy how much, and that's what I'm saying about wanting to, you know, continue. That's like the most fun about making movies. I didn't know that I wanted to make movies, but when I started to see a, a progression of getting better at something, because you don't always get that in your life. You know, you can't. Really, you don't really have like a diary of getting good at something, but you can see your progress if you go back, like having to watch your, you know, three-year-old movie. You're like, oh my god, I can do a lot better now. I think, and let's try. So like that is very exciting to me. So yeah, uh, lighting was a fucking I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. It's still like super hard. But again, you're looking at. Uh, not to take anything away from the actors, and Leslie Dame, who also helped out tremendously, who isn't here, and Kagan Rice, who shot the movie. This is half of the people on the crew of that movie. <laughs> like, no exaggeration. And that's not how you do it. So, like, I mean, you know what I, normally. So, there was a lot of things that had to be done by a very, very small amount of people. So, um, lights were just like, well, I'll hold the light. You know, which is, it is what it is. Both movies were filmed so differently. Like, Freak had that, that trip, like, to me, had that 80s, you know, mm -hmm. slasher feel to it, which I absolutely mm -hmm. love. Like, yeah, especially, you know, like, the whole scene was going to the river, everything. It just had that 80s mm -hmm. feel to it. Um, and Cock Island, this is the second time I've seen it. And I'm not gonna lie, it's actually better the second time than it was the first time. <laughs> so few movies that I've seen that are like that. I Blair Witch, I watched it when it came out and I fucking hated it. Absolutely hated it. This one here is the second time I've seen it and it's actually better the second time around. It was awesome. Hell yeah. like, so you heard it here. <laughs> yeah, watch it again. What, watch it again. I'm curious what made both of you choose the way that you did to film it. Like, you know, how, what, what made you guys choose to go with the way you did in Freak, and what made you guys choose to go with almost, not quite the found footage, but that, um, the streaming type, uh, type of uh, atmosphere with it. The term I love. media, yeah, the media. I mean, I, it's, it's found footage. The us idea is the cell phone to, you know, get some views along the way and freaks us out sometimes. Um, yeah. I think a lot of it comes down to, as time has gone on and technology has gotten better, things like filming on a cell phone have become so much more prevalent. But there's no, I mean, unless you are putting a whole bunch of weights and all the extra effort onto your cell phone to make it operate like a cinema camera, you're very rarely ever going to get that image. Whereas with, Ed, uh, with a cell phone these days, I feel like the lightweight mentality of it allows it to be used almost like a tool. Like, I wish we almost did more of like sliding the door into our door frame to see what's going on in the other room. I, that's that's how I wanted to see it personally. Was not that I was in charge of the camera work at all. <laughs> you knew it was I. No, that would've been good. But that guy that was went off to AFI, so he's doing better. Yeah, he's yeah. He's, yeah he's <laughs> um, who also shot Curse of the Were Deer, which mm. looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, should check that one out when it comes to town. I'm waiting on, on, wait on that one. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be great. Yeah. It's great. Um, not the one makes a freak look like freak. Yeah. Um. It's an old camera. Uh, I don't know anything about cameras. Um, it was just something I had. Um, I was in a band for a, a little while, and I had bought the camera to like film playthrough videos and like you know just keep track of riffs and stuff like that. Um, so I just had it around, and I didn't have money to buy like a fancy camera or anything. Um, and I, um, as a you know, as a fan of, of horror, I tend to gravitate toward the more underground stuff. Um, so I, I had an understanding of, of people who just use what they have around and just, you know, make what they need to make. Um, and that was what I had around, so that's what I made, that's what I shot Freak on. Um, but again, I, was, I wanted it to be a practical effects monster movie. And uh, the language of those is pretty specific, you know, the 
the way the characters are, the way, you know, what you see, what you don't see. Uh, I was familiar with that enough to, to feel like I could kind of take it in that direction. And um, thankfully, you know, it, it works all right. And the camera looks, uh, I think it looks better than, the, than it probably should look <laughs> because of, I know what I shot it on. But just messing with it a little bit and like literally searching on YouTube like how to make Canon T3i look like a movie <laughs> camera. You know what I mean? It's the magic lantern. It's cr I don't even know. I don't even know. You made that whole movie without the magic lantern? I have no, oh, I have no clue what that you is. You wipe the, the software, you put a new software on it, and it makes it like a ten thousand dollars. Oh no! I did. I don't think I. I don't think I did that. It's a long time. Let's go for the next one. All right, cool. Hopefully I won't be using that camera for the next one. But yeah, uh, so that's really that's really all it was to. I wish I could say that it was a little bit more intentional, but just knowing what I want, knowing what we wanted to make um, was like most of the intention, you know. Nice. Well, perfect. You guys are all true for saying that. Yeah. <laughs>